Hi everyone, welcome to this quick video on unpacking short response question 12 of the 2022 QCA Economics External Exam. These videos are helping you understand the problem solving nature of the questions, understand the steps in the cognitive verbs, understand how you can break down the data, and hopefully get you to hit more of the targets of the question. Okay, step one, as always, is know your question. Question 12 is worth seven marks. So seven things we've got to do. The question gave you 20 lines to write, and so therefore you're writing about 200 words. It's quite a lot of writing in the exam. Measures are extracts from the Australian federal budget scenario. So we know straight away we're looking at fiscal policy. Based on the initiatives presented, there's five changes, five changes, five changes to fiscal policy. Explain, cog verb, explain, the fiscal stance, the focus or the topic in this federal budget. Okay, so now we can see what we're targeting. We've got to focus on explaining the fiscal stance. So, we know that fiscal policy, understand your question. Think about how it links back to your theory. Is the use of taxation and government expenditure in our circular flow model? to create either expansionary contractionary or neutral is that how you spell neutral looks pretty good or neutral effect on the economy is the government looking to expand economic activity contract economic activity in terms of the circular flow or maintain a relatively neutral stance, expansionary, okay. So let's think about our cognitive verb, explain. What are some simple steps or some targets we'd have to do here? Whenever you get an explain question, the simplest target, the most element, the most elementary way to break this down is make sure that you give a what's going on, how are they doing it, and how does the data demonstrate that? And you'll have to break down each data set here, guys. And why would the government do it? Now, they may not necessarily come through in your writing in that order, but that's a good start. So in this question, explain the fiscal stance in the federal budget based on these five data sets. We, this is all we know. We don't know anything else at the moment. Okay, we only know these five. So we just got to figure out from that. Step two is understanding your data. Exclamation mark. So this data has five steps here, and we've got to think about whether it's a change of G or T, and whether it's expansionary, contractionary, or neutral, NEU. Each of these. So let's, let's, let's look through them. Introduction of a temporary budget repair levy, or a tax, on incomes. So they're going to increase tax, Therefore, it's contractionary. It's your COE. Second one, assistance for low-income single parents with a new allowance. A new allowance. So we're seeing a change once again of $1,000. We're seeing an increase in G. Therefore, this particular budget stance we'd suggest would be expansionary. The third one's tricky. Simplest way to think about it is that they're going to raise and increase the age pension to 69 and then to 72. So we'd have more people working, you'd be working longer, and um, government doesn't have to pay age pension to people who are age 65 to 69, and then 69, 72. So in effect, I think the easiest way to break this one down is that it's a drop in G, aggregate G, okay? So what will happen is that with the age pension rising, there's less money going to, to pensioners overall, okay? So once again, we'd say that's contractionary. A temporary pause on CPI indexation of payments. They're not changing the payments, they're just not going to manage, they're just not gonna change the indexation. So there's not really, G's not going up or down at this point. You could say that in the next year, G's going down, but it, it, this is one that was a little bit quirky in the marking guide. I kind of look at it and go, well, G, in that budget, G's down because they've paused the indexation. 
But I'm just going to tell you what the marking guide says at this point. They say it's a neutral stance in G. Okay, have a read through it again and see if you can figure out why. There's a temporary pause. We don't know how long it's going to last based on the evidence in front of us. At first, it looks like it's a bit of a drop of G. We don't know how long it's going to last. It's a temporary pause. They're not... Um, they're not, there's no discretionary change in a policy. We're saying we're just going to, we're just going to hold steady on it for a little while. Just hold steady. Okay. The final one is pretty straightforward. A reduction in the growth of hospital and educational funding to make the states more accountable. Okay. So the reduction in growth of funding. I'll give you a moment. Have a think what it is. That's right. It's going to be a drop in G. And if it's drop in G, therefore contractionary. Now, at this point, these five points equals the how. Here is our how. Here is how we've come up with our evidence to back up what they're doing. But now we have to start to draw some conclusions. What are we doing? We can see that there's a contractionary, a contractionary, a contractionary, and then there's one expansionary, one neutral. On balance, government's probably going into a contractionary overall fiscal stance. So based on the initiatives presented, explain the fiscal stance in this budget. So what is the fiscal stance? Overall, the fiscal stance is contractionary. There's your like nice strong opening sentence. Overall fiscal stance, contractionary fiscal stance. Nice strong opening sentence. Boys start well. How do they do it? How? You've now got breakdown one, two, three, four, five in terms of the change to T or G and therefore draw your conclusion. Is it expansion or contractionary for each of those? Like I said, these questions can look really straightforward once you have a strong structure to work with. Final step is draw a conclusion. And this, this point here, you think about drawing a conclusion, this for me is the why. Why would the government be doing this? So once again, this links back to your theory and it's really something along the lines of um, government is going contractionary to why would a government go contractionary to manage the level of economic activity okay to slow down the economy to manage spending to have a think through some of those reasons to this is where you start to come back to your theory okay why would they be doing that now also at this point it is worth always importantly assume that this reasoning is based upon this fiscal data, fiscal information, and that all other fiscal is the same. In other words, Assume ceteris paribus as it relates to the fiscal position. Don't just say, oh, assuming ceteris paribus. Don't just say everything else in the economy stays the same. Be specific on your ceteris paribus. Say something like, as you can see, assume that this reasoning is based upon this fiscal info in front of us and all other fiscal is the same, ceteris paribus. Okay, so in summary, know your question. This is an explain question. An explain Simple way is what, how, and why. Understand your data. Link your data to the theory, to, well, let's change that there. Theory to understand. Cog verb. Okay, what's going on? Theory to understand what is 
going on. Use the question of cognitive verbs to break down the data. And this one here, I'd probably do the how and the what. Draw your conclusion, why, and assume ceteris paribus. Link to the topic of the question, in this case, fiscal policy. That's pretty straightforward. Let's see how we go now on a marking guide. Okay, you'll notice that the first four marks of the marking guide is one, two, three, four, five pieces of evidence. That's the five evidence. That's the how. Pause it if you need to have a look through them there. Explicitly identifies a fiscal stance. We came to the decision that it was contractionary. Provide accurate details to support the conclusion. To me, that's probably the why. And assuming ceteris paribus. So for a seven mark question, simply doing a what, how, or why, you're, you're, you're setting yourself up to hit the seven marks that you need to think about. Okay, hope this was helpful everyone and uh, good luck in studying for your exams.